And I'm like, yes, there is. You're a bitch. Hey guys, so it's only Tuesday, but I have quite a few things to update you on. The first one is, I'm sorry if my voice, voice sounds weird, but again, like last Tuesday, I have a sore throat that I woke up with. I don't know what's going on. If we go in chronological order, last night I finally finished Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. However, I still think that Empire of Storms may be my favourite book in the series, but I think that might be because that book just holds so much more significance to me because of like it being the only thing I had to hold on to while I was waiting for Kingdom of Ash. So I think that the series wrapped up really, really well. I think everything came together, everything was tied off, but I also see room for expansion in this world which I'm not sure if I want her to expand it because I, I always feel a little bit sad when a series is expanded and you see your favourite characters as like secondary or side characters. So I'm not sure if I want her to expand it but if she did there's definitely room and many different directions that she could go in. This world is so expansive and so intricate that there's like a hundred different possible story options in the past, in the future, like at the same time as this is going on. So I do think it wrapped up really well but it also leaves like room for interpretation and room room for more work if Sarah chooses to publish it. I know that it won't be anytime soon if she is because she's working on the second Akatar trilogy and also Crescent City, whatever that may be, will be out next year as well. Fingers crossed. But I absolutely adored this. When I finished it, I did hold it and cry for a little while because this book means a lot to me, you know, and this series means a lot to me and saying goodbye to it is hard. There'll be no more books in this world and that's that's sad. Then early on today I finished And That's When It Fell Off In My Hand by Louise Renison. This is the fifth book in the Georgia Nicholson series which is a coming of age contemporary that follows, she's now 16 at this book that I'm up to, a 16 year old girl who's dealing with boy troubles and just stuff about her friends and puberty and stuff like that. It's really really funny. I did read this one physically. I didn't go for audiobooks with this one and I really enjoyed it and it is my favourite one in the series so far mainly because it does it does contain one of the funniest parts in the series that has kind of stuck with me so I really enjoyed this one I gave this one five stars as well however aside from the first one which I gave four stars I will probably give all of the books in the series five stars for nostalgia factor the only book that I won't be rereading in the series is the final one and I'm interested to see how the series wraps up that way but I'm currently I think there's nine books and I just finished book five. Now we have some possible ways we could go with my TBR. I'm not sure what my workbook's going to be, but at the moment I'm looking at either Forever Interrupted, I think, by Taylor Jenkins Reid, or Continuing the Giver series by Lois Lowry. I'm up to The Messenger in that one, which is the third book, which follows a side character from the second one. As you guys probably know, The Giver Quartet follows like a series of possible utopian futures for Earth, kind of after society has crumbled and I really enjoy the concepts but I don't love that they're middle grade but I am willing to see the series through and sort of see how it wraps up because they're only like 200 pages and they're really quick to read. I think Forever Interrupted is the Taylor Jenkins read book that follows a woman who meets this guy, they have a whirlwind romance and they get married and then about a week after they're married he dies and she has to deal with her monster-in-law who didn't know that she existed. So those are kind of the two options that I'm leading with right now. I'm looking for something to break up the fantasy I really do fancy like not a trashy romance but just something like romantic and overly dramatic like overly dramatic and not really all that realistic are my favorite types of romances so I think that Taylor Jenkins read book kind of fits the bill. For the physical book I'm going to be reading I have a few options that we have Kinslayer by Jay Kristoff which is a Japanese inspired steampunk dystopian. This is the second book in the Lotus War series I absolutely adored the first so that's an option. Then we also have The Poppy War by R.F. Kong which is based on the rape of Nanking which is when a entire city in China I think it was in China was massacred and raped by the Japanese and it's sort of like a retelling or it's based on that but set in a fantasy setting. These two are both out from the library so I want to get to them soon however I'm not feeling slumpy after Kingdom of Ash but while I was reading Kingdom of Ash I was thinking about a little bit of a romance before I head into like another over 500 page fantasy. I mean I did finish and that's when it fell off in my hand but a book that I own physically that is on my December TBR is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. This is the second book in the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series which as you guys know follows Laura Jean who accidentally gets her love letters posted out and has to deal with all that chaos. So this has 337 pages so it'll be a pretty quick read however I'm feeling a little bit like 
wary of it because I really loved the fake dating trope in the first book and I loved like the romance aspects but I hated with a passion Margot and I didn't really like Clara Jean and the way she's like I feel like she acts younger than her age like she calls her parents mummy and daddy the writing style at times was often like kitty was doing this and daddy was doing this and then margot is doing this and i just it got on my nerves and i hate margot with a burning passion i like i can't deal with her holier than though preachy ass attitude we'll see those three are my options but now that i have finished kingdom of ash my self-imposed spyro ban has been lifted so i think i'm gonna go play spyro at least for the remainder of tonight when I get into bed later, I may pick up and start one of these three books. Regardless, probably tomorrow I will tell you which book I did go with and what I am currently reading. But until then, I'm going to go binge on a tiny dragon, some gems and crystals, and I'll catch up with you later. Hey guys, so unusual setting because I've just been filming, so I thought I might as well do my vlog update. But you might be able to tell from uh, my voice that I'm sick. So I woke up in the middle of the night. Like, I woke up yesterday morning, and like I said in my clip, I had a sore throat, but that happened last week, so I didn't think anything of it. But then I woke up in the middle of the night, and my throat was really sore. So I went and had a look in the bathroom, and I have, like, I don't have my tonsils. I have my tonsils removed so instead of getting tonsillitis I get uvulitis which is like the little dangly bit at the back of your throat like swells then I've also had like just generally like weakness and nausea and stuff from it so I'm not doing too great but I had to film my Game of Thrones announcement so I had to pull it together and film my voice was actually okay when I filmed that but I think I overdid it a little bit and now I, I've got all croaky again so I just thought I'd update you on a couple of things before I get into bed and I read because I'm really feeling quite unwell but the first thing is that I was shocked and astounded when I woke up in the middle of the night it was like 3 a.m and I took some cocodamol to ease my throat and I was just scrolling through Twitter while I was waiting for it to kick in and I could go back to sleep and I am the bookmarked is it a book club bookmark discussion group booktuber of the week and if you don't know bookmarked is run by zoe from read by zoe hayley from hayley and bookland and hannah from a clockwork reader so i was like shook i was so shook so thank you so much guys for having me as your booktuber of the week like what i was literally like so taken aback by that and i just thought that i would let you guys know because like i was going to update you this morning but my throat was not in a great way so i was like you know what we'll just wait till a little bit later and hope my throat warms up which it did but it's gone again now so last night i did play a little bit of spyro as i said i was doing but my neck and my shoulders were aching which is like a whole part of the illness thing um and i just i wasn't really like focusing so i stopped playing and i got in bed and i did pick a book to read and start it and i started ps i still love you by jenny han and i'm on page 30 and i gotta say guys like i'm rolling my eyes and cringing so hard already so i can't really go into why without giving you spoilers for not for this book because i'm only 30 pages in but for the first book so in chapter two something quite strange happens I, I'll, I'll go about it in vague terms so there's this character who's quite hurt and upset by something that lara jean did or did not do at the end of the first book and she goes to see this person and they're quite upset by what she's done they steal a letter from her pocket and read it and then it's just like oh you're forgiven and it's just like what like what because then immediately after reading like that this person's hurt and upset i thought that would be what the book was about like building a relationship again from that point but no like everything's fine so then laura jean like goes back home and her big sister who i hate margot is quite upset and i, I don't like margot because like i think i mentioned it in the last clip i don't like her like self-righteous holier than thou attitude she's crying and laura jean goes to comfort her like at the end of the first book she breaks up with josh her boyfriend at this point she's crying about him she's been to talk to him and she didn't like what he had to say and she's like looking for reasons why he said the things that he said to her or like she wanted something from him and he didn't want to give it to her essentially because of her actions like at the beginning of the first book she breaks up with him because she's moving to scotland and she's real blase about it and doesn't give a shit she doesn't contact him she doesn't speak to him even though they've been friends for years before they were even dating and so she goes off to scotland and she doesn't talk to him and then she comes back and has a conversation with him she, she wants something from him and he's like you know what no so she's like upset but like she brought it on herself to start off with and then the secondary thing of this is that she's looking for reasons why he would have done that so she says to lara jean she's like 
oh well if this thing is true if this thing has happened then it's okay like it's fine it would be hard but that's fine and Lara Jean's like I don't think that that's not the case it's not what you what you're insinuating and she's like oh so there is no reason for him not to give me what i want and i'm like yes there is you're a bitch i'm raging at it already the writing in this like gets me as well the similes and metaphors are like sickly sweet but i kind of like i can like them but they're a little bit like cringe and i can't find you like a specific example of that okay so this isn't like the worst example but this is like the only one that i can find right now she's about to do something that makes her really nervous and it says like snow globes you shake them up and for a moment everything is upside down and glitter everywhere and it's just like magic but then it all settles and goes back to where it's supposed to be things have a way of settling i can't go back that's like not the worst one there's one that's like something about honey and stickiness and i'm like can we just not please and another thing is that lara jean reads like she's like 14 and she's like 17 18 and i just can't i can't it it annoys me. I am going to continue reading it because I do want the light contemporary to break up the heavy fantasies that I've been reading and that are on my TBR because I'm going to be going into either the Poppy War or Kinslayer next so I kind of want something a little bit lighter until then and this is the only one that was actually on my TBR that is kind of light but I'm essentially only in this for the relationship like the Peter Kavinsky like I'm in it for Peter Kavinsky and that is about it. Margot was slightly less annoying of what I've read from her so far than she was in the last book but she's like that last chapter I read god she pissed me off. So we'll see how I go with this. I'm gonna go get a shower now and then get into my bed of pain and die and yeah I'll check in with you guys whenever. Hey guys, so I'm feeling a little bit better today or at least I thought I was. My throat isn't anywhere near a sore but um after dinner i sat down to watch riverdale and just like catch up with my bullet journal and oh i look terrible and i started to feel a little bit weak and tired so maybe i'm not doing so great after all but i just wanted to pop on with a little bit of an update because um first thing is i'm on page 68 of to all the boys i've loved before no P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. But the main reason that I came to update you is that I started the, not the messenger, I started Messenger by Lois Lowry today, which is the third book in the Give Quarter. I'm halfway through already. And somebody commented on maybe my last vlog and said that they'd stopped after the second book. And I said like, yeah, I get why. It's kind of just like a rehash of the same thing over and over again. However, Messenger is a little bit different. So it follows a side character from Gathering Blue. And it's also kind of a direct sequel of the first one because the character, the main character from The Giver is also in this one. But they're in this place that's like touched upon in one of the previous books. It's not like the other places. It's not like this perfect utopian society. But I do feel like it has a very strong strong political undercurrent and I'm not sure that I'm jiving with that especially like for it to be so political in a children's book. I don't read a lot of middle grade so I don't know if that's like normal or acceptable but it seems to be conveying some pretty political messages throughout the narrative which uh, is that appropriate for children to try, try and persuade them like influence them politically I, I don't know <sighs> obviously this was written I'm not sure when it was written but it wasn't written recently but it seems to be very relevant to the situation in the UK and a lot of other places around the world particularly Europe I'm not sure how it is in like the US and things like that but essentially they're in this place and it's a place where people are always welcome there's always people fleeing other communities and they always wind up in this place which has enough food you know they share things all the time they have education free education and then all of a sudden something is happening i'm not really clear on the what the something is but the people are changing and they have decided that they want to close the borders of the village and stop letting people in and not too far from the point where I'm at, like this isn't really spoilers because it doesn't, I say it doesn't have anything to do with the plot, but I'm not really sure what the plot line is throughout this series. <laughs> Essentially, these new people arrive and then later on the main character meets one of them they only arrived like a few days or a week or so ago and this woman's really worried and the guys the main character's like oh what's wrong and she's like oh i'm worried about my children and he's like oh your children will be fine like we're gonna look after them everything's good even if they close the borders like you're already here now that's fine and she's like oh no my sister's come in with the rest of my children i only brought one of them and i'm worried that they won't be able to get in when they get here and i'm like oh politics i'm just really not sure how i feel about that reading the other books i had like like it's a dystopian right and i had these feel they didn't feel overly political but this one is definitely like has a heavy undercurrent 
of politics and to a child I don't think that would be obvious because children won't know a lot about politics I assume I, I mean I didn't I don't think at the time I knew who the Prime Minister was or did I? The first Prime Minister I actually knew was Prime Minister when he was Prime Minister was Tony Blair so I'm not even sure like what years he ran from I don't know when I was aware of like politics existing at all but yeah very political and I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that but I do anticipate finishing it possibly before the end of the week if not early next week so I will fill you in on my final thoughts but I wish I had some more experience with middle grade so I could sort of know whether this was normal because I just <sighs> I mean having underlying like an underlying sense of morals and morality and what's right and what's wrong and what you should do and how you should treat people in children's books perfectly understandable so that they learn these key things in life but like politics Ugh. I'm just not sure how I feel about that, guys. So I've literally just finished filming a video, so I was like, I'll update the vlog while I'm in this setup. Which happened not long ago, but you know, while everything's set up, I just like may as well just carry on my filming role. So as you may have seen from the very minimal vlog footage I got today, we did go to the York markets, like the Christmas market. I didn't finish my Christmas shopping, but I got everything that I needed to get from like in-store, which was good. I don't really have much to update you on on the reading front. I'm around like 60% into Messenger by Lois Lowry and I'm 104 pages into P.S. I Still Love You. You may be able to tell from my voice a little bit I am still sick. The fatigue is getting to me, honestly, guys. On Thursday night, I went to sleep at 10 p.m. and I slept for 10 and a half hours and then I still crashed at 1 p.m. Um, and then last night, I tried to sleep. I was, like, on the verge of sleep at, like, 8 p.m. But then my boyfriend came in and was like, you won't sleep tonight if you sleep now, which was kind of true. So I got up and I did some stuff to keep my myself awake um and yeah every time I pick up this book like I can get through a few chapters and then I start to fall asleep so slow progress I did buy a book today it's not really one that I wanted to buy but oh my god it's wet from the rain that's just great but I got Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare and I know that you've heard me run and talk about how bitter I am about Cassandra Clare but I had to buy this one this may be the last Shadow Hunters book that I buy especially full price I I kind of want to at least start this trilogy before she releases the first book and the next one so I can kind of make my mind up what I'm doing about Cassandra Clare once and for all but this is like you can tell with the size of my head this is the oversized paperback with the sprayed pages and I have oh god I can't get them down because they're wedged in but I have a lot of shadows and lady midnight in the big print with the sprayed edges so I wasn't gonna not get the last book in the trilogy in the edition that matches. How big is this book? I know it's hefty. I don't even have room on my shelf for this massive, enormous thing. It's like nearly 900 pages, which, you know, I'm not, after Kingdom of Ash, I'm not ready to commit to another book that large for quite some time. But I did buy this. I felt like I had to. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure whether I will ever buy another Cassie Clare book. I'm kind of, the way I feel now, I'm happy to leave it at this trilogy, read this trilogy, and let that be my goodbye to Cassie Clare. However, a lot of people are saying that this is really, really good. And if it's really, really good, then I may be compelled to read her next trilogy. However, that, I think, is another prequel trilogy. Which, um, the whole, one of, one of the reasons that I'm bitter about Cassie Clare is because I don't think the Infernal Devices are anywhere near as good as the Mortal Instruments. But I did read the Mortal Instruments when I was at the age that they are intended for. I was like 17, 18. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with me and Cassie Claire. You guys know I will update you as I'm going along, so you'll you'll be filled in. But that is everything I have for you now. I'm gonna go edit a video and then I'm possibly going to read might play some Spyro. It depends. I've kind of been headachey. The fatigue hasn't hit me like while I've been shopping. Like honestly, this morning I was sat in bed crying because I needed or like at least wanted to go shopping today and I just did not feel up to it. But I am feeling I'm feeling kind of shitty, like I said, I have a headache and I'm a bit tired. But we'll edit this video, we'll see how I feel. I might play Spyro, but the problem, like, 
sometimes I just feel like I can't sit up like my head my neck and my shoulders all hurt so we'll see how I'm doing after I've edited the video and see if I can get another chunk of PS I still love you done Hey guys, so I'm just here to wrap up the vlog. I'm on a rampage 165 of PS I Still Love You and I haven't read any more of The Messenger yet. Going into next week, we are going to be doing the Christmas at Hogwarts readathon magical readathon thing. My TBR is already up. This is the first book that I'm starting with. I'm gonna be like following that readathon a little bit throughout the week. I'm very optimistic for once in my life I have set a realistic TBR and I believe that I can do it. Also there is going to be a poll going up on my Twitter about what day I should post next week's vlog. By the time that you see this hopefully the poll will already be up. I'm only gonna run it for like a day but Essentially, my vlog should go up on Christmas Day next week, but I'm gonna ask you guys whether you'd rather it went up on Christmas Eve, because obviously, like, neither of those days really are ideal for sitting and watching YouTube, but they kind of, like, <laughs> they have to go up on one of them. So, uh, let me know. Go follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description box so you can, like, find out that information. But aside from that, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch up with you guys in next week's vlog. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go when nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no